So we have consumer protection, and then we have animal welfare. So it's a two-fold issue. And if you have somebody training your dog who's using fear and pain-based methods and they're creating problems and giving you misinformation, that's no different than if I hire a contractor and they come in and they break down a wall in my home unnecessarily. Regulating the profession is not the answer. And the reason why is because if you go to regulate the profession, then all of the shock collar trainers and the prong collar trainers and all of the little whisperers are going to come in and say, well, we need to be represented too. And politicians don't get it. The answer, if you really want to know how you fix this, is you go to the cruelty laws and you add an addendum that includes professional dog trainers in um, a companion animal context. There's only one state in the country that has that, and that's Massachusetts. So there's already language for it. So we do have a precedent set. And there's been plenty of dog trainers who've been sued and gone to jail for abusing dogs in a training context. If you look at cruelty laws, a lot of times they'll have language like dogs cannot be overworked or overburdened. Well, if you have, if you have a dog who's being repeatedly shocked or kicked or choked, wouldn't you say that that is overburdening the dog, right? Overworking them? So if you have that addendum and, you know, you'd have to be, you know, exact in the wording. Um, and for me, it would be, you cannot cause a dog fear or pain in the context of pet dog training. That simple.